He that comes to me must believe that I am, that I am, that I am the all-sufficient one. The God that can rescue you. You know, some of us, we read the Bible and, oh, we are amazed by all of the historical miracles. But God wants to do some miracles today. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that God wants to help us out. Hi, my name's Angel Falcon, and I'm honored to be uh, before you here today. We believe that there's no greater responsibility entrusted to us as believers uh, to give you, teach you the Word of God. I trust that you will be richly blessed by what you're about to hear. Remember that as we increase in the knowledge of God's Word, His blessings are sure to fall upon us. Trust you I'm excited. I'm excited today for just a lot of different things. I'm excited one thing for, um, I'm excited because God took this, this mess <laughs> and gave me a message. I'm excited because God saw in me something I would never see. But aren't you glad that God is not a respecter of person? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I, I'm excited that I, I, I've come. There's some things that God has just laid in my heart. I'm excited about what God is doing. And, and, and sometimes I look back and, and sometimes you got to slow down a little bit to kind of uh, focus on, on what God, I got to time myself, forgive me, uh, focus on what God um, is looking to do. And um, as you know, we, I started a series about two weeks ago concerning how important it is on our end. We have a responsibility, and, and this is the word from the Lord that came to me. He says, my people need to understand. Um, and remember what the word of God says, that script, those scripture verses says, if you can believe, turn to someone and say, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. <laughs> Another scripture verse says, if you can believe, you will see the, what you can, all things are possible. That's what it says. If you believe all things, or not some things, but all things are possible to him that believeth. So we learn that our faith really can create an environment that God can work in. God needs an environment full and pregnant, alive with faith. And when we, that's why it's so important for us to stand. I mean, stop you. We're going to go through ups and downs. We're, and, and I know this is going to be hard for you to, to receive. But here it goes. You ain't going to get everything right. <laughs> we are not going to get everything. <gasps> we are not going to get everything right. I always tell Lord, I said, Lord, I, I, cause I, he shows me when I don't, you know, he says, really, really? I, I, I'm always going to get everything right, but I know that he don't, he won't ever quit on us. Yeah. Amen. And, and he promised that what he started in you, what he started in you, he'll see through. And so we realize that, that, that our faith in who he is, he, he, he warns us, tells us in, in, in Hebrews eleven six. 6, it says, he that comes to God, it's a, make it personal, he that comes to me must believe that I am, that I am, that I am the all-sufficient one, yes. the God that can rescue you. You know, some of us, we read the Bible and, oh, we are amazed by all of the historical miracles. But God wants to do some miracles today. Yes. Today. Today is the day of salvation.
Today is the day that God wants to help us out. And so I, there's a scripture verse that just speaks volumes. It just, it's one of those really embracing scripture verse that reveals so much uh, to God's children. And I want to take you there. Turn with me to Isaiah. <clears throat> Chapter 40. How many of you want God, want to make sure that you create an environment that God can work in? <clears throat> what? You ever ask yourself this question? Ever ask yourself, how come God did that for that person? And I'm going through this stuff. How come God did that for pastor? And look at me. Maybe if I was a pastor, that would happen to me. That would cause, that would make God a respecter of person. That me, that would, what you're saying is that because of my title, maybe God did that. God is not a respecter. The only thing hindering God's move is, is our attitude. Yes, yes. And our capacity to believe God is so vitally important. And even God watches what you say. Because he reminds us, a double-minded person will never receive the promises. If you're double-minded, if you speak faith one moment, then speak unbelief and doubt the next day. You know, what are you, what? You know, God is my rock. And the next thing, oh my God, what am I doing? Give me a break. Somebody needs to slap you. <laughs> I'll volunteer. <laughs> but here's a scripture verse that has some elements that are so rich. And I, my prayer is that this scripture is familiar scripture verse, but I hope you see it in greater light and I hope you make it yours. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. We're going to read the whole scripture verse and then I'm going to backtrack and just... Uh, uh, expound on some, some really rich stuff. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. But those who wait, we've been talking about prayer. We've been talking about uh, um, of the need to, to, you know, we know that God is our lifeline. He says, come, I am the fountain of life. Yes. Hallelujah. He who hungers and thirsts, come and drink. Yes. The beauty about the scripture verse is this. He goes, he says, and those that wait on the Lord. See, wait is a very important word. I'm still on the, uh, in the series concerning how, how precious it is for us to be praying. I, I know I'm a little excited today. It's just, uh, I, I, I see the, it, this, this stuff just stirs me up. It keeps me going, makes me keep fighting when there's no fight in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know, am I, am I talking to somebody today? <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, those that wait upon the Lord, wait. Wait is a real precious word. <laughs> but wait can really get us into some anxiety. <laughs> Ever invited somebody to your house? You know, yeah, yeah, we're ready for you. We're cooking. We're going to feed you. We're going to fellowship. Hallelujah. And you got everything ready that's supposed to be there at four, but it's like five. Everything getting cold, you got to reheat this, you got to do this. So, so waiting has an element of, of expectation, which is good. So, so, you know, those that wait, those that have expectation. The first thing we have to understand is that if we, you know, those that wait upon the Lord, there, there's, there's gifts or uh, uh, blessings that come with those that learn to wait. And I, I looked up that word. I love it. It says, uh, uh, waiting is a place where you, uh, uh, it's almost like uh, you, 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 you're waiting for, for, for who, it, it, it requires somebody else. You just don't wait for nothing. 
You wait for God. You know, those that wait, wait upon on the Lord. In other words, this is this is a this is an invitation. This is this is an encounter. This is I'm waiting for God. I'm tell I submit to you, church, that part of our biggest problem is we don't learn, we don't know the value of waiting on God. Ever did something you wish you should you should have never done? But you couldn't take it back. And now you have to deal with the consequences of it. Waiting is a critical part of our spiritual life. But God says, wait upon me. And the essence of that word, and I, I, I wrote it down. I, I wrote it down on my notes when my eyes were a little better. <laughs> and now I had to write it down to get it in you know, a, a bigger font. But it says this, wait has to, is the, is expectation. It's a, it's a, it's a lingering for, it is, it is a waiting for that gathering. It is waiting for that moment where you quiet your soul and you wait to hear from our creator, our God who loves us. I think that sometimes the reason why you know, it seems like this generation is losing the, the, the precious opportunity uh, to, to encounter God and waiting on God. And, and just, uh, it's, you know, we can get religious and we, you know, praying and intercession and, you know, all of these things just represents a moment with God, which with our creator, he that, that, that have proven throughout history how much he's committed to deliver us. And so this, this waiting is, is a, is, is a, a, a here, here's something sp special about script, some scriptures that reveal to us concerning waiting. Waiting, you know, leads to God's direction. I, you know, I'm just reminded right now, you ever tell your kid, you know, you say it loud enough, but you, you're trying to get their attention. I need you to do this. And they're so busy. They hear you, but they're so busy, distracted. You know, I thought I told you to take up that thing, put it in your room. <laughs> just yesterday, just, I mean, my kid comes into the house, takes off his coat and drops it right smack in the middle of the den. Really? Really? So I'm telling him, and he's just, you know, he's listening, but he's so busy with playing. I want him. <laughs> so I got to get his attention. I got to grab him. I says, listen <laughs> to me. <laughs> Is that where the coat belongs? Now, when I grab him like that, now I say, oh, dang, I better, I better pay attention. <laughs> but we laugh at that. But a lot of God's children are like that. We're so caught up. We just, we're not, we're not, we're not, we don't know how to wait. We don't know. We put our foot in it. We, you know. But the beauty about waiting here is that there's an expectation. That means, you know, you know, some of us, let me tell you something. If you have an encounter, if you have a real encounter with God, when you wait, you repeat, you'll keep repeating it. You'll keep going to that place. Reason why we don't pray as often as we should is because we, you know, you, you're not, you, you, either there's something blocking uh, that, that, that engagement. But it is vital, he says. It, and now there's prerequisites to this. When we learn to wait, Stay within that expectation. Uh, scripture says uh, uh, it, it, he leads. In that place, he looks to lead us. So as we wait, the, 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 the consequences of waiting will, will bring his direction. Uh, it helps. He reveals to us certain things that we need to put in place. There's, so there's a lot of different elements that comes from waiting. I love a scripture in a verse that says, Lord, I have quieted my soul. Quiet it, my soul, that I may hear you. Uh, the problem is today, 
the reason why oftentimes we don't hear God is because we're not quiet enough. We're not waiting long enough. Someone a long time came to me, genuinely asking me, I pray, but I, I can't hear God. And she meant it. And before I could even think about responding, the Spirit of God says, He is a respecter. He respects you. If you go to God, He's going to respond to you. But you need to quiet yourself. Quiet yourself. You know, don't, don't go blaming God that He's ignoring you just because you, you, you don't know how to hear. We always seem to be blaming God for, for, for our lack. And so, so when the Bible tells us, he goes, he says, and, and, and there's a beauty in that. I love, I love in, you know, in Isaiah 30, 15, you don't need to turn it. It says, in quietness and confidence is your strength. Did you hear that? Do you quiet your soul? We don't know how to be quiet. We don't know how to be quiet because we're exposed to so many things. You don't know how many times, you know, you know, listen, oh, and, and I got my timer here. So the, please, I'm not disrespecting the house of the Lord. It's my time. But, you know, sometimes you go like this and, and oh, look at, <laughs> look at what, oh, look at those pictures of my family. Oh, look at this. Look at, oh, let me bypass that. Oh, and God is saying, can we talk a little bit? Can we talk? We spend more time. <sighs> Just don't know how to be quiet. But now, here, here's, here, here it goes, but those that wait, you know, and that word wait, its original Greek implies, um, a, 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 a gathering with. It requires a, a bonding together. And at this point, it's making reference to God. In other words, it's like a fellowship. Coming together, listening to what he has to say. Amen? And, and a discourse, because the conversation goes both ways. Oftentimes, the reason why, you know, because we're good at telling God what you need, but you're, you're not as good as waiting to see, you know, what God's response is to that. Or whether even if it's good for you. We just want what we want and we, we use God. But, but so, but, but there's, in Isaiah 49, 23, it tells us that those that learn how to wait in God shall not be put to shame. If you learn to wait, you won't get your foot in things. If you learn to wait and do the right things, you know, you know, things will align itself favorably on your behalf. But now, in light of that, in light of waiting, there's a, there's a preciousness. Before I move any further, you need to understand that it is immensely valuable for your spiritual development that you learn to wait. We can't wait. You know how I know? Because you don't know how to sit still. Matter of fact, as soon as you leave service and as soon as you get into your car, you got to listen to the radio. As soon as you go home, you got to, you know, you're going to, you, you know, maybe you don't want to wait till you get home to eat. You want, you, you're hungry now, so you go to Taco Bell. But we're always busy, always doing something, always got to be hearing. We sit down, we don't know, we, you know, we don't know. We have to hear, we listening and doing, and, and we have to be entertained. That's not quietness. There's a, there's a word by the Spirit of God that we have lost the art of clearing our thoughts. You know, thinking yourself clear. Because there's so much clutter in us. And you don't even realize, you're so, so cluttered that you don't even know that there are things happening right in your midst looking to destroy you 
uproot everything you have worked hard for and you don't even know it's taking place right in your own home or at your job. Wait, learn to wait. Shut down. Shut down. Shut down radio, television. Shut down your phone. Trust me, man. Just shut it down. That's why God created the answering machine. If it's important, they'll leave a message. <laughs> if it's an emergency, they'll text. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. See, it requires of us. When we get to that place, then we'll know that God is God. who He is who he says he is and can do what he says he can do. But now from that, again, as we go further, wait. But those who wait on the Lord, now this is what happens when you wait. You shall be renewed. There's several things. There's renewal comes because of it and strength comes because of it. And there's a, a couple of other elements, so side notes concerning, you know, what takes place when we learn to get quiet. Quiet. It says this, renewal literally means to uh, invigorate you. How many of y'all need some invigorating? I need, I need. You know, there's a reason why God says, you know, to draw from me. You know, uh, sometimes, you know... Ever felt like you're on empty? Love God, you want to do the right thing, but <sighs> there's, there's some people need a push, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Well. And I don't I don't care how spiritual you are, you'll experience that. Because stuff gets on you, stuff comes on you, and and that, and that's why. Scriptures is clear that his, his mercy is new. We're going to need his mercy every morning. Amen. And this is a progressive uh, purpose in God. That, that, but he's looking, again, focus on this. That if we learn to wait on God, if we, if we realize the value of waiting on God, renewal will come. Restoration, that word renewal literally means restoration. It has to do with, with God will infuse his life. He will, the Bible says, quicken by his spirit. Hallelujah. He will quicken you. Romans 8, 11. Precious. Make you alive. He will, you know, fill you with, you know, not, you know, move that heaviness off of you. There's too many of even God's own people walking in, in just, just, just heaviness and just, you know, and you know you're heavy when you just don't, there's nothing happy about you. <laughs> Love being around people who are alive and full and vibrant, excited, you know, they're, they're inspirational, but, but then there's those that are just like, you know, and then, you know, what gets me, some people say, I don't know why nobody ever calls me. I don't know why anybody don't ever want to hang out with me. <laughs> renewal is a God looks renewal. This word really means, uh, you know, that 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 time that we spend in waiting on God it will restore us. will refresh us. Another translation says refresh. It's kind of it's kind of what sleep does to us. I didn't know how serious sleep was until there was a period where I couldn't sleep for whatever. There were so many things happening in my life that I, I in ministry, personally, uh, physically, there were so many things that I was going through that, that I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep, you know, and I never, I never needed you know, uh, you know, anything to help me sleep, uh, you know, even natural thing. I, I, you know, you know, I hit my bed and I'm, you know, in five minutes, I'm 
out, out. This day I couldn't, I couldn't sleep for nothing. And I realized, remember, you know, sleep has, is God ordained for you to what? Refresh yourself, to renew. Sleep is renewal. It renews you, refreshes you, man. You know, so I lost, man. I couldn't sleep like almost three days. It was so messed up man, and it altered my character. I know, I know all of y'all, you always see me at my best. Pastor is so loving, so humble, so understanding. I saw myself snipping. Short fused. I said, and, and I remember, I hear the Holy Ghost saying, you need to chill, son. You need to chill. And I'm saying, what's going on? What's going on? I remember some pastor, you look stressed. What you talking about? <laughs> I don't receive that, brother, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> What is stress? And then all of a sudden I said, stress? What's stress? You know? And I remember reading up on stress. Stress is when you seem to not have sleep all the time. So you sleep, you think you slept for a long time, and you wake up and only two minutes pass by. That's how fast your brain is going. And I'm saying, oh, stress, a lot of stress will make you irritable. Oh, short fuse. Oh. God is into renewing us. And when, when we really, it is so valuable that we learn to engage in God's presence, waiting for him. Because I'm telling you, you're not, you know, if you're not constantly refreshed by his wisdom, his insight, his words of encouragement, his guidance, amen, then we, you know, you know, we struggle. We'll, you know, life will be a drag without his, without, without him, without his involvement in us. Renewal is, is to give a freshness, a freshness of life, a freshness in our emotions, in our attitude, even a freshness in our bodies. God is able to refresh us. And if we study, we see it in the life of Jesus. Even after he ministered to the multitude, he went out into the desert. He went out into the garden. Very late at night, he ended his day before his father. He was up, Bible says, he was up before the sun came up. He, he had a disciplined life. He knew. He knew. And uh, what great example it is for us. What, what, how's your quiet time? How, how, how? What? Sometimes we just rush, rush, rush. It is so, see, that's what happens sometimes because of our the struggle. And I believe it's, it's really an, a spiritual attack. Are you hearing me? It is a strategy of the enemy to get you so busy. Do you know that the devil tried to get me so busy doing ministry? Doing ministry! Doing his work that I neglected my time with him? Hi, this concludes uh, today's message. Uh, let us know how you were challenged by it or whether you have any questions or not. We're here to serve you. And our desire is for you to walk in the fullness of God's blessings for your life. God's promises are yea and amen. They're for us to obtain by faith. Hope to see you next week as the Word of God continues to minister to our every need. God bless you. You have a great day.